How much redundancy and how much overlap is Apple willing to have with their silicon now? That they're bringing their custom in-house design processors to the Mac, and at the same time, uh, iPad Pros are still probably going to get Apple silicon with really, really powerful advantages over typical iPhone processors. So there's some pros, there's some cons. I'll be weighing them both today. Let's begin. <laughs> I know a lot of you are thinking, well, Drew, they would not put the M series chip in the iPad because M stands for Mac, just like the W chip stands for wearable and the M chip stands for motion coprocessor, but now it stands for Mac. The H chip stands for headphone and the T2 chip stands for uh, the security chip and the A series of chips stands for uh, the... Uh, the, the a iPhone chip, and then the X in the iPad series of chips stands for, um, uh, extreme performance? And then the Z series stands for, uh, zippity boo -ba. there's another GPU core now. So yeah, the naming, right? Very consistent and very logical. So as you can tell by that little brief example, just because a chip is named a certain thing, I don't think necessarily makes it exclusive. I think we should look at what the chips are built on and what they stand to offer to the product. And frankly, Frankly, as I brought up in my video comparing the iPad Pro to the MacBook Air, a lot of people realized that performance was not the main differentiating feature between the two. Most of the time it came down to iPad OS features versus Mac OS features. One is not objectively better than the other, it just depends on your workflow. And if that is how Apple is going to continuously pitch the iPad Pro argument versus the MacBook argument, this is what you get if you want a desktop operating system that can run a lot more legacy software, and this is what you get if you want a touchscreen or a an optimized app store and better cameras, better biometric, better display. You guys know that whole debate. But because there's so many differences setting apart the iPad from the MacBook, in my opinion, it would not be the craziest thing in the world if Apple decided to just keep shipping the M1 chip in the next generation iPad Pros, which are rumored to launch at some point next year. I don't get a lot of things right in my history, but I will put myself on the record here and say I was the one suggesting Apple was not going to release a second iPad Pro in 2020. Just despite all the analysts and all the leakers claiming, nope, there's a 5G mini LED iPad Pro coming later. And back when I reviewed the 2020 iPad Pro in March, everyone was like, ah, this sucks. I don't want to buy it because there's going to be a new one coming out in October. Here we are. Year's almost over, unless they're going to launch one with a site refresh in the next couple weeks. I don't think we're getting new iPad Pros until at least March of next year, probably more likely June. And the most natural progression of the iPad lineup would be for it to adopt the A14X chip, which would be built on a five nanometer architecture. We've referenced it in a lot of leaks and rumors in the past, but the funny thing about that is a lot of those leaks and rumors were suggesting that the MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, those were gonna be getting an A14X chip. So is it possible that all of these supply chains and all of these internal sources were referring to the M1 chip as A14X? That way Apple could have at least somewhat of a little bit of a reveal on stage when they had their Mac event earlier this month month. I feel like given so many people were calling the Apple Silicon that was going into the Mac the A14X chip, perhaps the M1 basically is exactly that. And in time, once they're ready to update the iPad Pro again, they'll just throw in the M1 chip and just say, hey, all this great performance you've been experiencing on the Mac Mini and on the MacBook Air, and I guess the base model MacBook Pro, though I don't like that one as much. Now you can experience that on a tablet, on an iPad, which will give you insanely good performance, much better than that than the previous generation iPad Pro, but I think that quantum leap with iPad Pro performance is justified because the A12X chip we got in 2018 is really not too different from the A12Z chip we got earlier in 2020. So in my opinion, it's kind of due for an upgrade. Those chips are still really powerful and really fast, but now that we know the M1 chip is also a 5 nanometer design and you could easily pop that into an iPad Pro, probably with some downsides of it being a little bit more underpowered because the battery is going to be a bit smaller, so they might not clock it at the same speeds that the MacBooks and Mac Minis get to clock them at. And the one difference I could see if you want to make the argument that maybe Apple does want to keep the A blank X series chips available for the iPad Pros is that maybe they want Thunderbolt and USB 4 to be exclusive to the Mac. That high speed data transfer and that high video output signal. They want that to be a Mac benefit and something that the iPad Pro kind of misses out on and it just sticks with USB C but it's not the full-speed USB-C that we can get with a MacBook. But now that USB 4 is a 
thing. I don't see why the iPad Pro couldn't receive USB 4 and just maybe it can receive a major software update with iPad OS next year and support faster data transfer speeds and who knows maybe get some revamped external monitor support and then having a full USB 4 port on the iPad Pro could help it be able to output high video quality signals. I think that would be a very much appreciated feature on the next iPad Pro. So if the one difference between the A14X chip and the M1 chip is simply one of them has a Thunderbolt controller and the other one doesn't, it would still feel pretty redundant to me to be like, okay, we have three different five nanometer chip designs. One goes in the iPhone, one goes in the iPad, and one goes in the Mac. And the performance between the iPad and the Mac are almost identical. It's just the iPad doesn't get a Thunderbolt controller. Yeah, it, it feels a little weird to give the Macs that type of exclusive access, especially as Apple is trying to pitch the iPad Pro as a laptop replacement more and more and more. And this just grows in awkwardness as Apple is constantly revamping and re-engineering their laptops and at the same time saying, you don't need a laptop, so get an iPad. Customers, I think, just get a little bit confused as a whole. So either way, what I'm trying to say is I'm very excited to see how Apple handles the silicon in the next generation iPad Pro. And honestly, since the launch of the M1 chip, if the A14X chip ends up coming out and the performance isn't as good as the M1, doesn't that make it a little bit underwhelming? Like compared to way back in 2018 when the iPad Pro launched, it was like, wow, the A12X chip is insanely good. It's so fast, it can do all these great things, but then a 14X chip comes out and sure, it's a lot faster than the A12X, but not quite as fast as the M1. We would all be like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. I wish it got the M1 though. Maybe to keep that wow factor and to keep that amazing performance that we expect from iPad Pros, it would make sense for them to share the M1 chip. We know it works with a fanless design like it does with the MacBook Air. And we know that Apple is willing to stretch the M1 chip across a whole suite of different products, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, whether it has a fan or doesn't have a fan. And sometimes they'll give the M1 chip a seven core GPU and sometimes they'll give it an eight core GPU. So if Apple's being this broad with the naming of the M1 chip, despite it being in so many different machines, maybe bringing it to the iPad Pro is not as crazy as you may think. If you're asking me what I would prefer, I would like to see the M1 chip brought to the iPad Pro. That way we don't have to say a 14X chip every time we talk about iPads. For the simple sake of keeping it simple and just having high class Apple Silicon and smartphone Apple Silicon, instead of having this like, well, it's better than smartphone Silicon, but it's worse than the Mac, some kind of mid tier. No, just give the iPad Pro the most amount of performance as possible. That's what I want. What do you guys want? Feel free to let me know. This is your Apple Shape here. I'll see you in the next one.